My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with the Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days to Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. Hello ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to another beautiful episode of the 120 Days to Jam Physics with Flash Isaac. In the previous episode, we looked at terms like the fundamental sound, the octaves, harmonics, overtone, beats, of ultrasonic sound, and we're also able to discuss closed and open pipes in terms of harmonics and in terms of overtone. I decided to move echo and reverberation to a new episode because they deserve special treatment and special attention. Now, what is echo? What is reverberation? In terms of big grammar, or for your exam sake, echo is a sound produced after the reflection of sound waves. It is also regarded as reflected sound. In terms of grammar, reverberation is a multiple echo it is a continuous sound or a multiple sound reflection with diminishing intensity. It is the persistent sound heard after the source has been removed. That is reverberation. In layman term or in explanation or paddy explanation, this is the concept of echo and reverberation. Other waves, I was able to analyze and establish that one property of wave is reflection. If you shine a torch on certain surfaces, you will see that that light will bounce back like this. It will reflect. Ah, I can't see where. Not just light, sounds also reflect. There are some surfaces sound cannot penetrate. As such, the sound will bounce back. Depending on the bouncing back of the sound, we can have echo or reverberation. If I am in a room with a wall or with surfaces that don't absorb or that don't absorb sound, then it's likely going to be echo or reverberation. And this happens in large hall. It is very, very good. Yes, reverberation can have good, import, um, good uses. For events, it makes us see that, okay, this hall is not dead. Before I go further, in events or in halls or in studio, you will see that the walls are made up of soft, materials, not hard materials. They are trying to control echo and reverberation. If I stand and I say, hello, and you hear back, hello, huh? hey, and hey, you see, the sound is bouncing back as it's going. You are hearing the thing. Oh, back. That one is an echo, echo, another echo. Back. Hey, it has become appallingly obvious. obvious. Right? The sound is reflecting. That is echo. How about reverberation? Reverberation is a continuous sound. Like I said, multiple echo or multiple sounds. You say something. Hey. Now it seems the word. It has become appallingly obvious. It's not continuous, even when you are not talking. Hey. 
you are not talking, but the sound continues. It is a persistent sound. After the source, it has become appallingly obvious. On frequency, and the sound dies down. Now look at this. If you have not understood so far, these two examples will help you. Now look at this example of echo. Sparky! Sparky! An echo? 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 You see that? Okay, now look at this reverberation. It has become appallingly obvious. So you notice the difference. For echo, this sound is bad. For reverberation, the sound continues. You say something and it continues saying it. Then it goes down and it goes down. Reverberation is actually not distinct. It's like continuous sound. Your sound continues. But for echo, you hear your sound coming back to you at a separate time, which means reverberation happens at a very short time than echo. Echo happens at a more further time. And for you to have a distinct echo, you should have at least 0.1 milliseconds time and the distance should be maybe around 17 meters for you to have a distinct sound in echo. The short form for reverberation is reverb and acoustic acoustic is the characteristics of a room or of a hall in relation to sound for an event hall the acoustic property we should be concerned about is the reverberation time reverberation time is the time it takes for sound to decay Remember we said that for reverberation, there is a diminishing intensity. So, if I make a sound and there is a vibration, how long does it take for that sound to die down? Generally, it is between 1 and 2 seconds. Also, reverberation time T is equals V 0.05V all over alpha s. 0.05 is a constant because time is proportional to V over alpha s. Where V is the volume of the hall, alpha is the sound reflective property of the hall, or you can say absorption coefficient. And s is the surface area of the wall or of the ceiling. Once again, reverberation time T is equals 0.05V over alpha S. T is proportional to V over alpha S. This is the volume of the hall. This is the absorption coefficient, like the property of the wall or ceiling to absorb or reflect sound. S is the area of the wall or of the hall. If you have all these parameters, then you should be able to find the reverberation time. So once again, the reverberation time depends on the volume of the hall, the surface area of the wall or area of the ceiling, and it depends on the sound reflective property or the absorption coefficient of the place. There are some materials without echo. They do not echo. They are referred to as anechoic materials. A N E C H O I C. Anechoic materials. These materials are also referred to as soundproof materials. They are used in studios to avoid reflections, um, to also avoid sound from coming in to the studio, or to reduce or to control the amount of sound coming in. To the studio. Examples of anechoic materials are glass fiber, plastic foam enclosed in muslin foam is an anechoic material, and leather panels. All these are examples of soundproof materials. Now, some applications of echo are measuring depth of a sea using echo sounder, pathometer, or hydrophone. There are some instruments you can use inside the water. Echo 
is used in underwater exploration by oil workers. Echo is used in finding the speed of sound in air. And echo is used in location of showers of fish. This takes us to determination of velocity of sound in air. We already said that echo can be used to find the velocity of sound in air. The echo method simply says the velocity of sound in air is equals 2s over t. 2s is the total distance traveled by sound before the echo is heard. So the distance traveled by sound before the echo is heard divided by time is how to calculate the velocity of sound in air using the echo method. The second method of finding the velocity of sound in air is the reciprocal firing. Here we have two observers, each with a gun and a timing device, trying to find the velocity of sound in air. In this case, the formula is not 2s over t, rather it is v equals 1 over 2, bracket open, s over t1 plus s over t2. Time t1 is the time recorded by the first observer. T2 is the time recorded by the second observer. And S is the distance between the source and reflecting surface. Ladies and gentlemen, with these few points of mind, I hope I've been able to convince and not to confuse you that echoes and reverberations are very interesting terms, very simple terms. In the next episode, we focus on something else. But before we finish sound waves, we'll be able to do calculations on that echo and other parts that require solving. See you in the next